This video provides an introduction to using Nexla, which allows anyone who works with data to easily design and operate different data workflows. The first screen is the Nexla dashboard. It displays an overview of your account, including usage, various data flow statistics, reads, writes, and any notifications or errors. The dashboard can be accessed at any time from the toolbar on the left. Continuing down this toolbar, Flows is where you can create new data flows and see a current overview of all constructed data flows. The Sources screen is where you can add sources such as databases, cloud storage, APIs, FTP servers, webhooks, and others. Once sources are connected, Nexla scans them regularly to identify different data sets that they contain. In Next Sets, you can view Next Sets that Nexla has automatically detected from sources and those created by transforming existing Next Sets. The Destinations screen contains information about locations to which Nexla should write data, and these can include a database, cloud storage, APIs, and FTPs, among others. The Tools menu allows you to access a number of other available Nexla features that aren't covered in this video, but you can find more information about them in our Help Center and other tutorial videos. In the rest of this video, I'll show you how to create a simple data flow from a Snowflake source to a REST API destination. This can easily be done in only a few minutes without writing any code. Here's a completed version of the flow that I want to create. In this flow, data is taken from the Snowflake source, transformed, and sent to an API destination. The flow includes an additional branch that sends the transformed data back to Snowflake, which I'll also set up to show how easy it is to manipulate data flows in Nexla. I'm going to start creating this flow by navigating to the flow creator. I'll be adding a new source, so I'll select Create New Source to add my credentials for that source. As you can see, connecting to any needed source is as easy as selecting it and logging in with your credentials. Nexla's connectors allow you to seamlessly connect to almost anywhere, and more are added every day. For this flow, I want to use a Snowflake source, so all I need to do is select Snowflake and click Next to add my credential. To add a new credential, you can quickly fill in the required information in this window. More complicated sources may require more information such as URLs, access keys, and other parameters, but these can also be easily added here. Additionally, credentials can be shared among team members without requiring passwords to be shared. In this case, I've already saved the needed credential, so I'm going to select the saved credential and click Next. Then I'll select the folder that contains my dataset and click Create. Now Nexla will automatically scan the source for files and data and will try to organize any data that it finds. It then produces what we call a next set, which is immediately ready to be transformed and sent to any destination. This process of scanning, identification, and next set creation is usually completed within a few seconds. And as you can see, Nexla has already completed scanning the newly added source and creating a next set from the data that it contains. At this point, we can directly send the data in this next set to our API destination, or we can easily transform the data before sending it. For this demonstration, we'll apply a transformation and validation to this next set before sending it to the destination, and we'll see that transforming a next set creates another next set. This screen is the next set designer. In the next set input panel, users can see samples, schema, and attributes of input data from the selected source. The menus in the top right corner of the screen can be used to choose the type and number of input samples shown, as well as whether to view samples in row or JSON format. The Next Set Rules panel in the middle of the screen is where users can set up rules to transform data to create new next sets. To begin transforming your data, click the Add Rule Group button. This will open a menu allowing you to select the type of rule group to add, including the options to create a new transformation rule, enter custom or reuse transformation code, replicate an input next set if no changes have been made to it, specify default values or record filters, and enter validations and output attribute annotations. For this demonstration, I'll select Transform, which creates a new rule group and allows me to define the transformation rule that I would like to apply. Nexla contains many built-in transform functions, including mathematical, location, time, conditional, and array operation transformations, and many more. Here I want to convert entries in the last name field to an uppercase string, so I'll enter a name for my output attribute, select uppercase string from the function menu, and select last name as the attribute to which this rule should be applied. Each time modifications are made to transformation rules, the Run Next Set Rules button will flash. 
Clicking this button applies the current rules to the next set and generates a preview of the output in the Next Set Output pane on the right, allowing you to check the results of the applied rules and confirm your output data. To add another rule to this rule group, I'll click Add New Transform at the bottom of the list. With this rule, I'm going to hash the IP addresses in the input data set. Now I'll click Run Next Set Rules again and confirm my output. At the bottom of the Next Set Rules panel, Nexla also provides recommended Next Set Rules, which you can choose to use to quickly get started building a transformation. These recommended rules are based on the overall input Next Set content when no input attributes are selected, and when one or more attributes are selected, the list is repopulated based on these attributes. For this data set, I want to apply a rule that converts the first name field to a lowercase string, so I can click on the Convert to Lowercase Rule listed in the recommendations to add it to my transformation. This will add the rule to my existing rule group and pre-populate it with the recommended parameters. Pre-populated values for any added recommended rule can also be edited if needed. Recommended rules are automatically applied, so unless modifications are made to the pre-populated fields, there is no need to click the Run Next Set Rules button when these are added to your transformation. In the Next Set Designer, each rule group displays Next Set Rules in the order in which Nexla applies them to the input data. This allows users to easily understand how their transformations work and simplifies the troubleshooting process. More in-depth information about rule groups is provided in our Transformations video tutorials. Nexla also makes it easy to validate your data. Let's apply some validation rules to this next set by creating a new validations rule group. This creates a required attributes validation rule, and I'm going to choose the ID attribute from the list, which will apply a validation ensuring that each record contains an entry in the ID field. Validations can also be applied based on the data type, range, enumeration, pattern, or size. I'll create an additional data type validation to ensure that the email attribute is in a string format. Now we have two rule groups, with the number of rules contained in each group displayed in these blue circles. Rule groups can be expanded and minimized, allowing you to view and edit any group. Now that we've finished setting up our transformation, we need to save these rules. Clicking Save at any point in the process of setting up or editing a transformation will save the current transform rules and allow you to continue editing the transformation. Once you're finished, clicking Save and Close will save the transformation and close the Next Set Designer. Now we have a new transformed and validated Next Set created from the initially ingested data. In My Data Flows, we'll perform the last step in creating this flow, which is selecting a destination to which the data in this new Next Set should be sent. I'll click the Send to Destination icon on the transformed Next Set to begin setting up the destination. The destination screen looks very similar to the sources screen because in Nexla, data connections are bidirectional, which means that they can both receive and send data. For this flow, I want to send the data in the transformed Next Set to a REST API destination, so I'll select REST API and click Next. I've already saved my credential, so I'm going to select it and click Next again. Now I can enter the API URL in the URL field and click Save. To activate this flow now, you can click Activate this flow, or you can exit this screen by clicking Done to activate the flow later. Once the flow is activated, data will immediately start moving. The flow will scale to accommodate any amount of data, detect new data in the source, and run automatically. As you can see, Nexla provides a simple visualization of this flow from the source through transformation and, finally, to the API destination. If this data needs to also be sent somewhere else, setting up an additional destination only takes a few clicks, as I'll show you now. Let's also send this data back to Snowflake. All I need to do is click the Send to Destination icon on our Transform Next Set again, select the desired destination, in this case, Snowflake, and click Next. This brings up the Snowflake data warehouse connected to my selected credential. Now I can click here to create a new table or select an existing table to which I want to send the data and click Next. The next step is defining the parameters that Nexel will follow when sending the data to Snowflake, and this process varies according to the destination. Then I can click Save and activate the flow. Now the flow is complete, and with Nexel's simple data visualization, we can see that the same transformed next set is being sent to both the API destination and Snowflake. Branches can easily be added or removed, allowing you to redirect flows within seconds, and there are no restrictions on the number of branches that can be included in a flow. With the flow constructed and activated, you can click the magnifying glass on any flow component to view governance information. You can see the records being processed, view the data write history and statistics, notifications and activity associated with the flow, and triage errors. 
This enables constant maintenance of data flows and makes data operations clear and understandable instead of opaque. In addition to these core features, Nexel offers many others that further enable even highly complicated data operations. To learn more, you can check out some of our other videos, read additional guides in the Help Center, or reach out to us if you have questions or would like a more detailed demo or trial. Mm -hmm.